Alright, man, so we back in that motherfucker. Back in with another video, you feel me? Our favorite. Our favorite villain con um, content creator. Deleted. I seen something yesterday, right? On the Twitter. And it was talking about how Drake, not Drake, but Academic was basically, um, How Academic was basically trying to put out a... Not even try to put out. He did put out a video. I guess it was some dude that ended up on some... Um, How to Catch a Predator uh, video on YouTube or some shit like that. He makes those kind of content. And basically, they're trying to say he is one of um, Kendrick's affiliated. Of course, coming from Drake. And like somebody said, it's only coming from one side of the... Um, <laughs> Only one side of the group or platform. So I heard Skepta was the mall version of the UK. In other words, Drake's bitch. I mean, the guy has the owl tatted on him. And apparently, Drake has something tatted of his as well. Not sure how true that is about Drake, though. I got this info from X. Because, you know, if it's on X, it's got to be true, right? So Skepta is a UK rap artist that appeared in the Skepta interlude for Drake. Track 10 on the album More Life. He I don't care. I think I talked too much in my video. What's the point of watching a video? What's the point of watching somebody's video if you're not expecting them to talk? But um, what I was going to say real quick. How many of us actually does that shit for real? Like, one minute, you could be on Facebook, right? And you'll see some fake-ass news that look like a fake-ass news. So you would be like, you know what? Hold on. No, I'm not buying this shit yet. For me, whenever I see a rapper, something happened to a rapper, or anything like that, I don't believe it until I go to Twitter. And I see Fate Chief talking about it. As soon as I see Fate Chief talking about it, that's when I'm like, yep, it's a rap. Recently sat down with Ebro on Apple Music when the Drake versus Kendrick beef came up. When stuff gets said like that now, today, it's more personal. Yeah. Yeah. Of course this is personal, dipshit. This is hip-hop. It's more personal. Sounds like a personal problem. I think there's something about... There was a lot of lying on it. There was a lot of lying. They, people were just saying... There was one diss track that came out and I was like, oh, this is this is over. Like Any of you Drake cake munchers are claiming that K-Dot crossed the line by making false accusations about the PDF allegations. I guess they disregarded when he groped and kissed a 17-year-old girl on stage. <laughs> Because she wasn't 17, bro. Come on, bro. She was 18, bro. If the... I had fun. I don't know if I should feel guilty or not. People that don't see this as the pedophile move are the pedophile themselves. I had fun. <laughs> this be the nigga that be like 37 trying to fuck with a, with a female that's like 16, 17. Breast feel against my chest is gone. She tells him she's 17 and he still begins to kiss and make inappropriate gestures. If her parents had pressed charges at the time, he could have been charged with child. So it's not a lie at all. And the video evidence is right there for you to see. What the fuck do you guys consider a PDF file? I guess y'all only feel it applies to people who sleeps with the underage. No, it applies to all individuals that do bizarre and inappropriate things with or to a minor. Even if it's just verbal. It don't have to be touching, it could just be verbal. In the state of California, everybody's state is different. Some of y'all think it's cool to sleep with 16 year olds. So we gonna read California's laws. California defines a bit differently than it defines other types of sex acts against children. Child molestation can include almost any type of inappropriate behavior, touching, kissing, making or lewd comments, etc. Those convicted of these charges must register as sex offenders as well. Basically, it was never cool. That video does everything that this paragraph I just read stated. Not to mention all the other allegations that are out there about the Drizzler, Millie Bobby being one of them. A 
great friend and a great uh, great role model. You know, we text, we just texted each other the other day and he was like, I miss you so much. I was like, I miss you more. Uh, about boys, he helps me. What? Yeah, 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 he's great. He's wonderful, I love What's him. What's his advice with boys? You know, that stays in the text messages. <laughs> so with that video, and with me showing you a California state law, it's not a lie. Stop changing the narrative. It seems Skepta also has amnesia, as if Kendrick didn't warn bruh from the beginning, with his Euphoria album cover alone. That in itself was a warning shot. Drake would then respond with Taylor Made, using an AI voice of Pac. He would then give Kendrick the green light by jokingly suggesting to use the young girl angle against him. Call him a bitch for me. Talk about him liking young girls, that's a gift for me. Drake also discussed the allegations on his song Another Late Night with Lil Yachty. Hey, widows in my comments talking about some Millie Bobby look. Just because Skepta and the rest of Drake's Glizzy Guzzlers weren't aware of the allegations that have been circulating on Reddit and YouTube for a while now doesn't mean Drake was oblivious to them. This song was released before the beef began, and he addressed those allegations back then. Let's not pretend this topic was pulled out of nowhere. Stop crying and stop caving. This isn't about, this isn't rap. This isn't a rap. This ain't clashing anymore. No, no, they don't like it. This, this is really, this is over. Bro, who the fuck cares? It's hip hop. Do you not see how cringe you're being over another grown ass man? Like let this guy fight his own battles. Leave that to their fan bases. You coming off as the overprotective wife or something. Skepta, academics, mall, all you guys are acting like some bitter, sad wife. Sticking up for they man. You would think the way you guys are acting over Drake is how Kendrick's wife would have acted on social media. And she didn't even have much to say. She just danced all over Drake's grave with her husband on the Not Like Us video. It's insane how much you guys are willing to cape for this grown man. It's cringe. It's weird. Like, you don't see it's, it's sus as hell. Like, yeah. they don't like each other. He's yeah. clear. I can hear it. Like, yeah, I can yeah. hear it in his voice. He doesn't like. I don't know. To me, I feel like, call, like, honestly, I love it. I love it. Why do I say I love it? It's because it shows you how much of uh, manipulating they can be to choose who the hell they want to crucify. You feel me? Because let's just say how much you want to bet, how much you want to bet if it would have been the other way around, um, Drake body and Kendrick, everybody and they mama would have been on that bitch. Everybody, listen, they, that would have been the talk throughout the whole, that would have been the talk throughout the whole 2024, bro. You feel me? A light skinned nigga body, a dark skinned nigga, but the fact that it was vice versa and... Like, like they say, like, you treat, <laughs> y'all go with him like, like that's y'all baby daddy type shit. So for me, I find it funny. I love it because it's just, y'all don't want to give nobody, well, some people give Kendrick his prop and somebody like, man, Drake put Kendrick on. If it wasn't for Drake, Kendrick, uh, if it wasn't for K uh, Drake, uh, K-Dot would have never been popping. He would have never been known. Da -da -da -da. Like, I don't know. That to me is. Um, Drake, when it sounded like you two just really want to see each other and do each other something. Yeah. But, bro, when did they ever like each other in the past? Jay-Z and Nas hated each other, talked about messing with the same girl, talked about skidding on car seats and shit. I came in your belly back seat, skidded in your cheek, left condoms on your baby seat. And I don't care if Jay-Z apologized later. He didn't J. Cole the situation and apologize during the beef. And since you infatuated with saying that gay shit, guess she was kissing my dick when you was kissing that bitch. You have Lil Wayne threatening to kidnap Jay-Z's wife. Wait, wait, you have... what? Was saying that gay shit. Yeah, she was kissing my dick when you was kissing that bitch. You have Lil Wayne threatening to kidnap Jay Z's wife.
You have Eminem questioning ICP's manhood, calling them gay because of the makeup they would wear as clowns. Plus, I was put here to put fear in faggots to spray fagel root beer and call themselves clowns because they look queer. You have Pac bringing up one of the members of Mob Deep, sickle cell illness that ultimately took his life. Oh, yeah, Mob Deep, you want to fuck with us? You little young ass motherfuckers. Don't wonder you niggas got sickle cell or something. You have Pac telling the best freaking diff, nigga. And Jay Z to die slow. I'm a bad boy killer. Jay Z got to. And then you have Pac yelling, My <coughs> foe, foe, make sure all y'all kids don't, don't grow. grow. Die slow, motherfucker. My <laughs> foe, foe, make, make sure all, all your kids, kids don't, don't grow. grow. Which was a bar, by the way. Beanie Siegel says this crazy shit to Jada Kiss. I'm thinking about raping his mom and making me watch. I'm, I'm taking my time. I'm making me watch. You have Biggie Yo. saying this cringy ass. Hey, Ayo. As weirdo bar. I hope they know my nigga got to fucking kidnap kids. Uh, fuck them in they ass, throw them over the bridge. When the f <laughs> This how much we don't pay attention to the third fucking rap lyrics, bro. Cause what the fuck did you guys think that they didn't hate each other? When the fuck did you guys think the shit was sweet? Battle rap has always been disrespectful as fuck. And before y'all come in here saying, oh, well, Pac and Biggie died because of it. Nah, they didn't die because of the rap beef. They died because Diddy and Suge had a feud that predated Pac even being signed to death row with one of their friends deleted by another friend's hand. The long-standing rumors that Diddy's then bodyguard Wolf unalived Big Jake, who was a close friend and bodyguard of Suge Knight back in 1995. It was an ongoing blood and crip beef that bled into Biggie and Pac and that they had no business getting involved in, which unfortunately caused both their demise. They had like they little words, right? right? And they went outside and they were in the middle of the street. They were in the middle with Puff the and middle, Shug? The middle of the street, Puff and Shug. Wow. Outside in Atlanta. That's, and this is at your park? Yeah. Is it a calm conversation or they... No, nah, it's not a calm conversation. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but it's not just hostile, them. It's a very hostile conversation. Okay. And their crews is, 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 is... Ain't no crew. I mean, Sugar's oh, wow. got is one person. Is that Puff got a crew. Crews is... Okay. Um, but not just... That is Bow Wow. It's a very hostile what? conversation. Yeah. Sure. And their crews is... is... <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. That shit just don't even look good with Bow Wow. Um, nigga took one of them. It's look, a look, very look. hostile Pick that up real quick. And their crews is... <laughs> nigga didn't even really hit that thing, bro. Look at this shit. Um, but it's, not a just them. it's a very hostile conversation. Okay. And their crews is... <laughs> nigga... The... Is, is, Ain't no crew. I mean, Suge oh got one person. Oh. Puff got a crew. Think oh. didn't even dude, inhale nothing, right? bro. And all I know is Puff started drinking his champagne mm. while they was talking, and Straight I some guess somebody champagne. must have said something to him. Mm -hmm. And next day I know, you know, Wolf, rest in peace, you know, mm. he let off a shot and mm. let off a couple of shots, and Suge Man got killed right there wow. in Atlanta. Oh, that was bless. the beginning of that whole shit. Wow. Like so, you're saying like like Big and maybe Pop might have been like <clears throat> they ain't had nothing to do with this. Yeah, but it, it affected like it's yeah, it went into that, but they ain't had nothing to do with this. The L.A. gangs took them out. The Bloods working as the corrupted LAPD and a live Biggie because Biggie went on an L.A. radio station mocking Pac in a freestyle rap, which led to LA feeling disrespected. He did that the same day he was erased. Not to mention, Biggie also said on a New York radio station that Snoop and Death Row was in New York, and he asked the question of why hadn't anyone pressed him, which ultimately got Snoop shot at. In the Crips underlie Pac, because Pac bum rushed and stomped out a known Crip shooter for snatching a Death Row chain, which is rumored that Diddy put a bounty on Death Row chains. So after the beatdown, of course they wanted revenge and took Pac out. This was a completely different situation. So stop comparing. It's not even remotely the same. But I know people love to use their feud as an example of why people shouldn't go too far. But this is Drake's feminine ass. No one is going to that measure with Drake. But Drake, with academics gassing him up to his audience, referring to Drake and his entourage as goons, putting way too much on, making people believe Drake is more dangerous than he truly is. But then again, anyone with some money could easily have someone touched. 
Pause. But he not testing no LA gangs. It's not happening. Just like Drake and Kanye's feud ending last time so abruptly, people think Kanye says sorry. Nah, man, read the room. Told Drake don't play with me on GD and he sent that message to everybody. Kanye has been linked to being tied with the GDs for years. You know what I'm saying? Gangster Disciples saved my life in Chicago. I'm here because of Gangster Disciples. And I am exactly who Larry Hoover wanted to see come out of the organization that he created. OGs even said they stand behind Ye. Don't play with that man on GD. That meeting with Jay Prince was clearly mob ties settling the dispute so no further issues would transpire. The way you could tell is how they took this picture and then shortly after, Ye randomly threw a free Larry Hoover concert. You know, the same guy who created the GDs. And then having Drake perform and wearing free Larry Hoover merch. Almost seems as the gangs got involved and Drake basically apologized by doing this show. The proceeds went to three non-profit organizations that are made for ex-cons but also there were rumors that some would go to Larry Hoover so in other words Drake was being taxed allegedly also Drake is very close to Dirk and it was rumored that Dirk was upset about how they did Drake because Dirk is a part of the Black Disciples the rival gang to the GDs in which Ye spoke about later on of how Dirk would rap kid basically I don't really want to say this, but if you can have, if you have money, you can basically be anything you want, nigga, just because you have money, bro. You want to, listen, you grow, you grew up in a, in, in a, in a gated, in a gated private uh, community, nigga, with some money, you can go out and be a gangbanger, nigga, with some money, you can go out and be a hitman, with some money, you can go out and be, like, that's just all I'm fucking hearing on songs that Kanye would send him and Dirk would send it back with disses towards Kanye. Dirk sent in a, a verse and it said, he said, take my Yeezy shirt off and make it a dome mat. And he Lil said Dirk. it four times. Yeah, Lil Dirk said this. I hit him up. I said, you know, you're breaking my heart. Man, this is bad for the city. It's like, it's one thing you got Drake. It's like, he's really paid to come and, and do whatever he does and shit come on my neck, all this type of shit. Right. But it's basically, Jay Prince wouldn't have a gang war behind Drake. He proved that with Ye and the GDs. So he's def not going to have a gang war with Kendrick and Compton. This started off as strictly rap, but like that verse by Kendrick didn't cross a line whatsoever. It was clearly a friendly fade, and Drake made shit personal first, like he did with Pusha T, like he did with Kanye West, and now how he did with Kendrick. He brings up their wives, which to me is okay. He responded the way he responded. This is hip hop. It gets disrespectful. Hey, that's gonna be my catchphrase throughout this whole video if y'all ain't noticed. If y'all ain't noticed already, man, this is hip hop. Push ups fire the first rounds with using Whitney's name in a bar about bodyguards. That's Kendrick's wife. That's personal as hell. It doesn't get any personal than that. When Kendrick's devotion is to protect his wife when he said those vows. So why go so low if you don't expect the person to go even lower? Pause. I feel like I'm gonna be saying a lot of pause on here. I'm trying to be serious, but at the same time, it's kind of hard saying sus ass, you know. If someone slaps the shit out of me, my goal is to knock their ass out. Not slap softer or just the same. Make that make sense, people. Come on now. If someone slaps the shit out of you, you're going to think in yourself, oh, well, I can't punch them. I can't knock their ass out. Hell no, somebody slapped the hell out of you the first time. Well, I'm going to dog walk you, nigga. Even if you don't, bro. But like... That's basically what he's trying to say, man. <laughs> it's like somebody come at you with full speed force, nigga. And you just come back. <laughs> that would be wrong of me. I hit him no, back, it though. Work that way. The whole point of rap is to obliterate your opponent through wordplay. Let the words cut deep and penetrate their heart and soul. Break a person down. That's the point. This is hip hop. Drake had the right angle with throwing the first low blow, but it seems he feels like no one else can do the same back to him. Nah, man, that's not how it works. Honestly, this is revealing Drake's only child energy at this point. You learn this growing up with siblings, man. Trying to snitch to your moms and say, hey, they hit me. And if she asks what happened, and you say you hit them first. Your mom says, well, that's what happens. And that's what you get. Keep your hands to yourself. You don't need to be hitting people. And you won't get hit back. Shit, some moms would just say, quit snitching. Cut all that snitching. 
Get away from me with that snitching. And what's with the people who are not a part of the culture thinking that they can try and change it? I can't stand this shit. Y'all complain about how we gatekeep, but clearly we don't gatekeep enough. You're saying, you're calling him a word, but he, bro, this guy's signed to thing. So now, how can they sign a man that is, that is being accused of this thing? So now, the things that, when I was clashing in grime, we never had nothing to lose. There you go. This is what I'm landing now. So, so, right, so when right, we're right, saying right, like things to each other, you could call me anything in the world. I'm not going to lose a Nike deal. Right. I'm not going to not be able to put food in my... That'd probably even get me more money because we'll go to the show and do the clash on the stage and more people are paying and rare, rare, you know what I'm saying? So The version help, they was doing was hurting. Us. It's hurting what we've... It's hurting what we've built. These doors are shutting on us right now, bro. We're looking crazy out here. That's why I didn't like that. It was good until they started sounding so, like... Like, it just sounded crazy, bro. So this is the part where I have to spoon feed you guys the harsh reality because clearly common sense isn't your guys' thing. Even though I wanted this video to be off of strictly humor and joking, I'm gonna have to go a little off topic and get a little deep for you guys to understand. Y'all might actually let nonsense like Skepta's weak sauce spark some kind of pity party domino effect and the result? Future artists too scared to drop real diss tracks because the likes of Skepta and Drake's emotionally fragile fan club decided to go cry about it. Imagine letting that soft energy dictate the rules of hip hop. It couldn't be me. So let's talk about it. Outsiders and guests to the culture don't get to rewrite the narrative. UK rappers or any other rapper outside the US are guests. Respect it. Respect the culture. It's no different than a white artist or any other race for that matter. You are guests to the culture. Hip hop was made by black Americans. It was created for us to escape and express our oppression. Black Americans are known to make things work for themselves without throwing a pity party about it. Well, back then at least, I should say. Whether it was fashion, slang, haircuts, music, dancing, or sports, we always would evolve these things into something we could call our own, putting a spin to it, because they would gatekeep everything from us at one point. Although we have created a lot of genres, such as rock and roll or doo-wop, those genres were taken from us. This is no different from the Harlem Renaissance, which exploded in the 1920s during the Jim Crow era where black New York artists creating a new form of entertainment which included jazz and R&B. This isn't the first time that black Americans created a music genre that was popularized. Y'all know I go way off topic sometimes. I'm getting to a point. Just, just listen to me, okay? We having a history lesson. As time went on, we began to hold on to things we created more closely and value them more deeply. Rap was designed to tell stories and express emotions that we would go through. And storytelling was the foundation of hip hop. Then of course, making songs to dance to, which adopted new dance crazes that would advance and change over time. But battle rapping was the heartbeat of the culture. The goal was to keep our youth off the streets and encourage them to fight with words instead of fists or weapons. That's not to say it never crossed the line or became dangerous, but for the most part, it stayed on the mic. The whole purpose was to destroy your opponent using words and also being the voice for the voiceless. For the long history of racial discrimination in America that started with the black codes and going to Jim Crow laws and then to the war on drugs in the 80s, which was done purposely by the way, to have mass incarceration to black men, to keep them segregated and get free labor by having the prison filled a new form of slave trade, right? So the streets would take to the mic and voice the stories of our oppression, like N.W.A., Tupac, Rakim. These stories would reach globally, pointing a vivid picture for people who didn't care to see, spreading awareness of what's truly going on in the black American communities. Rappers became the new activists, speaking with raw and filtered emotions of what black Americans were going through. So for someone in the UK to comment on when hip hop goes too far, as if they're not a guest in our culture to begin with, is both distasteful and lacks credibility. Nigga, this is our craft. This is our craft, man, that we developed in the United States as black Americans. Pay attention to the emphasis when I say black Americans. Although this craft has now branched out worldwide through other cultures and nationalities with other races involved 
who added their own ingredients to the mix. That doesn't mean to change the overall main recipe. That's like me studying spaghetti my entire life. I don't know why I would, but let's say I wanted to be like an Italian chef and the overall goal would to be the best spaghetti maker in the entire world. I don't know. And people now consider me as a legend in the spaghetti game. And I go to a five star restaurant in Rome, Italy. They're known to be the best at making spaghetti in the entire city and in the entire country. I eat it and I find things wrong with it. And I go on TV or X to let everyone know how I didn't like the way they made their spaghetti. And I go on to speak on how it should have been handled all from the previous experiences with other restaurants I've attended or maybe some books I've read. Y'all would look at my United States black ass and would laugh and talk big shit. Y'all would say, how dare you even think to have an opinion on their famous restaurant that won the number one restaurant award or some shit like that. When it's their country, the people who created the cuisine itself, they would say, how dare you criticize the way they make their recipe. That's their craft. That's their culture. That's their recipe. Hip hop and rap is a craft with the main recipe from black Americans in the United States. You are guests, don't change our recipe. Battle rap, diss tracks, there's no rules. Who told you guys this? The first time I've ever heard anything like this was when Drake tried to say something about Pusha T going too far about 40's illness. As if Pac didn't do that 20 years prior. Drake and company, the soft boys, the beta men, and the baby box of this era are the only ones saying something is too far when it comes to Drake. Why are you guys coddling this clear broad? I know clear tears are dangerous, but golly gee whiz G Willikers Batman. I'm gonna play that out, you guys. That's my new saying. G Willikers Batman. If you don't like how serious and personal hip hop beef gets, then do as J. Cole and ride a fucking bike out of here, nigga. Don't partake. Listen, <laughs> I don't hate Drake. I can't stand his ass and what he represents, but I don't hate, bro. I just like to make fun of him. But I'd be lying if I said I don't listen to his music. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Some songs slap and some songs don't. Not all his music hit and some do, but just like. Oh, no, man. Like I said, I can listen to him is the same way I could watch a movie made by the Weinstein Company. Django and Inglorious Bastards are. Alright, man, I'm gonna get at you on the next one. Y'all hit that like, hit that comment, let me know who to do next. And, um, yeah, be safe.